Hey everybody, how's it going? I want to make a video for you on hypertrophy. Now I know I've already done a hypertrophy video, but I think it, it confused a few people. And it was one of my first videos, I just kind of shot it real quick. Didn't really explain it very well, I kind of just shot it to get a video up on my channel. So I kind of just want to give you the science side of things, just kind of tell you actually how it works instead of just why it works and um, what, it, what it does on the outside. I kind of want to give you the inside and let you know what's actually happening inside of your muscles. So in order to understand hypertrophy, you kind of have to understand the makeup of your muscle. And what really happens is you have your muscle, and inside of your muscle you have a bunch of muscle fiber bundles. And inside of these muscle fiber bundles you actually have muscle fibers. And then inside of these muscle fibers you have tons of myofibrils. And these myofibrils are actually enclosed in this thick, sticky substance called sarcoplasm. And the myofibrils are actually contractile. And what that means is whenever you're doing a lift and you're actually lifting up the weight and your muscles are contracting, that's the myofibrils that are doing that. Now the sarcoplasm is non-contractile, so that means it doesn't really help you to lift the weight up. So you might be asking, well, why is the sarcoplasm even there? And the sarcoplasm is there because it actually holds the energy sources for your myofibrils to contract. So it actually holds your glycogen, it holds your ATP, holds your creatine phosphate, and a lot of water that's drawn in with those. So now that we have a basic knowledge of the makeup of the muscles and uh, the sarcoplasmic fluid, let's talk about hypertrophy. So what hypertrophy training really does is it breaks down your muscle fibers and depletes your body of its fluid inside the muscles. So after hypertrophy training, your body then has to go in and repair those muscle fibers and not only be bigger and stronger, but it also has to refill that fluid inside your muscles. Hypertrophy training as a whole both grows strength and muscle size, but there are different types of hypertrophy training that you can perform to put emphasis on each one of those. And the emphasis on the strength training side is called myofibrillar hypertrophy. And the emphasis on the size side of it is called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is achieved by usually doing two to four sets of six to 12 reps of 70% to 80% of your one rep max with about 30 seconds to a minute and a half rest interval in between. And this is gonna give you a really fast increase in the size of your muscle, but it's gonna be a slow increase in strength. Now the fast increase in the size of the muscle comes from excess sarcoplasmic fluid which holds your energy source for your muscles to contract which like I said is your glycogen, your ATP, your creatine phosphate and a lot of the water that gets drawn in with those. And the reason that your muscle grows in size so much from sarcoplasmic training is because your body likes to use ATP as its main energy source for muscle contraction. Now when ATP is used as an energy source it actually has to drop a phosphate molecule so it's then ADP. That's where the creatine phosphate comes in, turns that ADP back into ATP. But by training with high reps and low rest intervals, you're not giving your body enough time to recycle that ADP back into ATP and this makes your body resort to its glycogen storages for energy. So over time, your body adapts to this and it says, hey, we have to put more glycogen into the muscles in order to energize his workouts. So that's why you get so much bigger is because that glycogen is getting drawn into your muscle because your body is adapting to your hardcore intense workouts and it's actually putting more energy into your muscles. Now the average man holds about 350 to 500 grams of glycogen throughout his whole entire muscle throughout his body. Now a man who does sarcoplasmic hypertrophy training can actually double that to almost a thousand grams. And each gram of glycogen brought into your muscle brings three grams of water in with it. So adding 500 grams of glycogen into your muscle can actually make it look like you added four and a half pounds of solid muscle mass, when in reality, all you really added was energy and water into your muscles. Now you might be saying, well, if this is the case, why am I getting stronger? Well, doing sarcoplasmic hypertrophy training is mostly gonna work on size, but as long as you're using the principle of progressive overload, you're still going to be tearing up your muscle fibers and gaining strength. Now let's look at myofibular hypertrophy training. Myofibular hypertrophy is achieved through performing usually four to eight sets of one to five reps of 
to 95% of your one rep max with about a two to four minute rest interval in between. And what myofibular hypertrophy training is gonna do is it's gonna give you a really fast increase in strength, but a really slow increase in size. And the fast increase in strength really comes from bigger, stronger myofibrils. And this happens because whenever you're moving really heavy loads at low rep ranges, you're really tearing up your muscle fibers. So after workout, your body has to go in and it has to rebuild those muscle fibers. But whenever it rebuilds it, it builds them bigger and stronger so it'll be able to withhold that weight better the next time around. And the size gains are slow in this because you're not really just increasing the fluid inside your muscle, you're actually increasing the size and the density of the actual muscle fibers. So you're still getting bigger, but it's at a much slower pace because like I said, you're not just increasing the fluid, the muscle fibers are actually getting bigger. So this is more of a clean gain that's gonna last longer and be better for you in the long run. And it's actually gonna make you stronger, but it's just gonna be a lot slower because you're actually growing the muscle fibers. Now you still will get a little bit of water in your muscle, but since you're doing such low reps and having so much rest in between your sets, your body can actually recover and produce that ATP back for energy so it really doesn't have to resort to its glycogen storages and you're not really telling your body to put more glycogen inside your muscle. So you're actually growing the muscle fibers, not just filling the muscle with water. So I hope this video helped clear up some confusion from my first video. I know a lot of people were confused whenever I said that sarcoplasmic will have a softer look and myofibular will have a, um, a more dense look. And I kind of confused people because I was actually saying what's happening inside the muscle fibers. To the bare eye, you're really not going to be able to tell the difference whether it's dense, hard muscle or really just fluid and energy inside your muscles. So to the bare eye, you can't really tell. But on the inside of your muscles, that's what's really happening. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, keep watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.